Tracy's at work, and it is such a beautiful day today. Fall has finally come to Kentucky. So what I wanted to do was, I love cooking out over an open fire, and I, I used to do 18th century uh, reenacting a long time ago, and I bought myself a tripod, and um, I was at an event, and this uh, blacksmith was getting ready to leave, and he cut all of his prices in half, and I couldn't resist. So I have a tripod that I love using to cook out over an open fire, so today I was going to make um, hamburger vegetable soup over the fire and I was gonna show you how to set it all up I'm also planning on making um, cornbread in my Dutch oven and um, so first things first though I have to uh, dig a fire pit which this is our new property and there's really no fireplace fire pit or fire ring here so um, when I used to reenact we used to reenact on um, uh, someone's field and people would cut up the sod lay it off to the side and then they would just put their fire in there and then cook over that and when they were done they left before they left they would take the sod roll it back out stamp it da back down in and it would always grow back in so that's what I'm thinking about doing today to teach you maybe you might even like to see that and um, so I'm going to do uh, vegetables um, hamburger vegetable soup and um, hopefully there'll be enough time to do some cornbread and um, I have to go get some wood first we're gonna my husband uh, Tracy wants me to use up some of the branches that are in the backyard back here from him cutting that all the limbs off of everyone's trees this past summer so I thought that was a good idea I get that used up
branches, I mean my bigger uh, branches, I'm going to try to cut out some sod and start our fire. Thank you. 
Um, got the fire going really well. I've got some good coals worked up. Um, the tripod's in place. Now these are called S-hooks. They can, this is a, um, antique one. This is an old one, uh, hand forged one from a lot, uh, it's got to be about 150 to 200 years old, and I was uh, I was blessed enough to be able to buy one, find one, and then these are some that some blacksmith friends made for me, and what their job is to is to you hook them up here, and the more you hook up, the lower their pot will go. So the higher you want your pot to go, they come in different sizes. I have a really long one. I have and two shorter ones. But I mainly use the two mediums a lot. And sometimes the smaller ones, but I've never really used this that often, but it's good to have in case I do need it. And I've gotten the ground beef in my my pot and it's uh, sitting in its um this is called a spider. and uh, it's made the whole pots. Now it can be put over the fire or it could be put off to the side so that you can take your pot off the fire and put it off to the side so you can work with it. Add ingredients, stir it, whatever you need to do to it. to the fire all day and cooking over the fire and it's just and it does change the flavor of your food um, when I make chili over the fire it's ten times better than cooking any chili I could cook over the stove it's just really really good the smoky flavor gets into the food now I don't enjoy the flavor of the smokiness with all the food I cook I've made um, a roast over the fire with um, to make uh, some uh, broth and noodles uh, with the uh, uh, noodles in the broth and everything. I really didn't care for it that way. But um, you know, I'm always keep practicing, keep using it and, and until I find the ones that I do really enjoy cooking over the fire and the taste of it all mingle together. no poison ivy or poison oak in on the logs because if you inhale it the oils that when they get burnt if you inhale it it can go into your lungs and you can get very very sick This is about as high 
as I want it to get. It's actually coming up over the top of my pot here. And um, if it wasn't sticks, sticks burn back down quickly. If it was a log burning that high, I'd probably take my S hook and put a smaller one in there and lift my pot up higher. I wouldn't put um, any more wood on the fire for a while until it died down. Um, it's really just like a up, down, just always paying attention to how your food's cooking. Now on this cast iron pot, it has a spring. It has like a metal spring around it. And that makes it easier for me to pick it up if, if the handle happened to be hot. Long as hook comes in handy for pulling the being a poker. So I had to um, go inside and prepare, cut up the potatoes, prepare a few things, and it's getting running late, and I wanted to make sure that I was able to finish my my dinner over the fire tonight, so I had to move things along. So sorry that I didn't film everything, but um, it's starting to bubble again. And it's just mainly a hamburger vegetable soup. Hamburger, onions, um, I didn't add garlic, but you can. Um, okra, potatoes, carrots, peas, corn, beans. I added um, some canned pe uh, beans. Uh, I think they were light kidney beans. And it's just really whatever kind of beans you think you'd like to have in your soup. Now I'm going to let that cook over the fire for just a, until the potatoes are done, basically. Everything else should be done. So, this is cooking over the fire. Um, now this tripod could be set up in a different way. Um, it can be set up where the two, two ends are in the in the ground like this, and the third pole goes across and um, lays inside of here and goes inside that hole. And then the, uh, or it could be the two, two, how it's made up is there's two rods with circles, and then the third rod has a, uh, like a shepherd's hook, has a hook on the end. And then the hook hooks into the two round holes. Now the two round hole ones can go into the ground, and the third one, can grow across the top and you could actually hang several pots. Um, I've seen um, fire pits where they were rectangles and they would have one, two, three, maybe even four pots cooking all at one time. Now they would have in the trench, it'd be like a long trench, they would have long branches or long logs about that long or depending on how long they wanted their trench. And then they would keep adding more logs that size as the fire went down. Now a lot of times, a lot of the cooking is done with the ashes, the hot embers. And in fact, I have a tin oven that I plan on using also and showing you how to use it. But it's a tin box 
and you scrape Amber's hot ashes off to the side and you put the box over top of it. And in the back of it, um, there's like a reflector tin at the bottom where it reflects the heat up around whatever you have in there. And at the very top, it has some slats to let the extra heat out. And so it bakes just like an oven. And um, so I could, I've cooked biscuits in it. Um, they came out wonderful. And you just scrape the ashes across to the side, put the box over top of it, and the heat from the ambers bakes whatever you... Now you have to watch it a little closer. You do have to watch it a little bit closer than you normally would. My dog's barking. My husband's at home. Yay! <laughs> um, my dog's a good alarm for me. He lets me know if anyone's coming down the driveway. I like that. So. Are we on YouTube? <laughs> you caught me, dear. Oh, we're on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Only go park the car. Okay, go park the car, dear. But anyways, there's several ways to use these, these tripods. You make a long trench, and they don't have to be as long as this either. They can be shorter ones. I've seen a lot of people have um, not quite as thick of cast iron tripods as this, and they would go down a lot lower, down to here. And then they would cook. They wouldn't need as big a fire. That's that's what you're going for. You don't want a big, roaring fire most of the time because it takes more wood. And the, when it's a roaring fire, you don't have as much control over it and you of your heat temperature. And several times I've had to raise up the pot today because it was actually scorching my um, ground beef as I was cooking it. And so I had to take it off and low, uh, raise up my my S hooks so that it wouldn't burn the, my ground beef. And um, so I, I hope that I covered some of the ways of cooking. I, I really do want to show you how to make cornbread over um, cooking in a Dutch oven. Wasn't able to stir it. One thing you want to do is make sure uh, you have a water hose ready to go. Uh, not that there'd actually be a fire that gets out of control, but uh, whenever it happens, you don't want to be scrambling around trying to find a water hose like the Keystone Cops and try to throw it together at the last second. So it's good just to have it just in case. There's a big pot of soup on the fire. You know why there's a big pot of soup on the fire? It's because my wife loves me. <laughs>
here outside. It's dark. Uh, you can't really see anything, but we thought you might enjoy looking at the camera.